Hi guys, uh, uh, welcome back uh, to another installment of Opera DBS series. Today I'm gonna take in, I'm gonna focus on performance training for uh, all of our racks. I'm gonna cover uh, some of the tips uh, that have uh, been recommended both by all and also by all of the professionals. Um, um, okay. So basically, yeah, in terms of rack, um, so when you think of rack, don't just don't just think of um, think of many components that are so like that are sort of working together to get you to have that hazard ability for your environment. So uh, let's say you have an error. So what you have to do first is you have to identify what each of, each of those components are, and um, uh, and then basically what you what you're gonna do after is you're gonna have to weed out uh, which components uh, are not the problem, and then so like um, settle on on which ones might be the problem, and. Uh, also, uh, another thing that you can do to really um, uh, make make um, performance tuning for um, for your environment uh, go easier is um, basically you should have uh, you should only implement uh, software that are rack aware. By that I mean um, basically, for example, uh, if you wanted to uh, you know review reports and you wanted to use staff rack, uh, the problem that you would encounter with that is that. Um, is that certain uh, some stat stack uh, version actually do not are not rack aware, so you would only be able to access the information from one one individual node. Um, but if you want to view uh, information for all the nodes, uh, basically that would be you know you probably go have to go for a, one of the newer version of of stat stack if that is available. If, if that's you know that's something you choose to do. Uh, also, you need to uh, make sure that you're not um, you're not basically um, having you're not compromising your network. Um, by that I mean, um, with RAC, uh, what typically happens is that um, as you're configuring it, you actually have to assign a private network and a public network uh, virtual IP for um, for for those two networks. And if you compromise, if you happen to have you know one one um, mislabel for the other. Basically, having public IP for, for as a as a private, a private as a, as a public, then you might find yourself, you know, in in um, you know, with, with performance issues because again, you're you're exposing your private IP. Uh, the public IP is the is the is what's supposed to be what the uh, what's supposed to be displayed uh, for your nodes. Uh, you also need to consider the storage network that you're using. Uh, again, this what whatever storage. Um, uh, uh, technique that you that you, that you have uh, and that you have so like configure on installing on your on your rack environment. Uh, also consider like that that storage uh, uh, um, tactic might also have a, a network, and you might uh, you might you might uh, that you might need to just pick that um, you know how that how the performance of that network is in different in different situations, and also. Um, Again, as I've already told you, uh, just make sure that your mock that you you know you have a diagram of your of your rack of your rack system. Uh, pretty much, uh, just you know, uh, basically something showing the node, uh, you know, all the different components, and then you just mark out uh, X uh, for the ones that are not the issue. <coughs> and then also another thing that you should consider is um, basically with your ASM, um, uh, with your ASM, with with ASM uh, instance that 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 will be uh, installed. Um, and some that that we part of the uh, that will be installed on you know that you be using for uh for storage uh, with rack is that you need to consider uh, what size is the memory for um for the ASM uh, again by default um, ASM um, basically gives you 256 uh, megabytes um, for for uh, memory for memory space so if you ever have you know multiple nodes let's say uh, 256 you know I'm not sure how many nodes that that, that that would support, but if you find yourself just uh, scattering out and adding more and more nodes, then what you need to do is you need to uh, adjust that uh, that that um, the memory the memory the memory for ASM memory type for ASM, which is basically the memory target parameter, and uh, basically just you would be able to uh, um, you know go in and just and then and then uh, and then issue a uh, a command uh, to to um, to to take care, you know, to, to, to take care, to, to resize the memory, uh, the um, yes, the memory, memory size. Um, and I think also, uh, uh, I think this with this, you, you should be able to uh, also, uh, um, you should, you, you should, you should, 
AMM should, should allow allow you to um, do the resizing. Uh, should should be should, should do the resizing. But then again, uh, I, uh, I would I, would, I think uh, that um, that basically if you okay AMM is automatic memory management, right? That's that's the that's the um, that's the, that's what uh, that's the old, that's one of the older software is responsible for resizing your, your memory. Uh, you mem the memory, um, uh, the, you know, the, the, the memory allocation, uh, uh, allocation uh, unit. So um, I think that if you set it up, if you set AFM to uh, AMM, you should be able to do that. But then again, um, uh, again, I only have an example of, of how to do it manually here. So um, I would, um, yeah, I on this is only manual. Um, this is only a manual uh, configuration. You might have selecting to um, you know how to do it automatic with AMM, AMM. And then the way to just view um, view those uh, the memory those memory um, 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 values uh, the, the memory size values. So uh, the command that you would issue is a show parameter memory um, while you're logging to your SM, SM, SM instance and what that's, that's what that's, what that's going to do is going to it's going to sh it's going to show you two uh, two uh, parameters initialization initialization parameters um, uh, one is going to be the memory max target and the second one is going to be memory target uh, and I think uh, basically uh, with these two they're sort of uh, they this they might sound you know like they they're just about the same but the truth is like they have um, they um they have different they have different um you know uh functions in terms of um you know uh, uh, the open instance so it basically just make sure that you you, you view these you look at these values and, and make to make sure that you're comfortable with each uh with each of them and also the next command that you're gonna issue is the you is the select uh star from uh v dollar memory dot memory underscore dynamic underscore components and that's gonna give you basically uh it's gonna give you a picture of um what the um what the underlying components are uh the buffer cache the the large pool the shell pool and it's gonna just uh it is, it's gonna it's gonna give you what the SGA size the PG, the PGA size so you'll be able to know what the ASM instance is looking like internally. And again, this is just a diagram of uh, of a three node uh, three node um, rack installation. Again, so what I was referring to earlier in terms of marking marking S uh, for those and that uh, the areas that are that are causing the problem. So uh, you know, if it's the if it's the node itself, then you would just you know you would just mix, just go to the node, uh, see see you know do some do some um some perform some tests on the node. And uh, and based on what you but based on what you um do on your results, you be able to mark out which node is not the issue, um is not the problem, and then you should be, you should also you know again uh, consider uh, the uh, virtual IP uh, addresses for your for your node. So again, ETH O is the it's the IP address for the public, and uh, ETH one is the IP address for the uh, for the private uh, network. Uh, again, this is the, this is the storage. Um, that's the storage um, tactic uh, that's being used for this for this um, installation. Uh, and then if and then again, uh, as I've already told you, so uh, again, just cons just make sure you consider the storage network uh, uh, while you're doing your performance tuning. Uh, that uh, that you know the network might you know the, the storage network might might be might be uh, what's causing uh, your back uh, to not um, um, perform. Um, perform uh, too well um, and again just uh, again just every component that you can that you can that you can think of uh, just make sure you, you you stress test it until you uh, you feel comfortable uh, confident that it's not that, that it is not um, uh, the part of bottom and again this is just a uh, this is just a bigger picture of, uh, of, of what I've, of what I've just what I've already uh, what I've just told you guys uh, if you look here, um, so in this diagram, this is this is just a um, this is just a laying out of you know of the node and the switches and the virtual IPs and you know I don't have I don't go into much much great details on this one. But if you look at this one, this one is more is actually more uh, more complicated because now you have you have clusters you have you have uh, you have nodes on separate systems. 
and then what and then the thing that's next to me is actually the um, you know it's it's the, it's the fiber um, and then you have different switches you have uh, storage arrays so make sure you have this uh, this 5,000 uh, you know 5,000 feet uh, above about this way for look for the uh, for, for your um, for your, your rack uh, your rack insulation uh, uh, for, for your rack environment and you know what make sure that you know what the switches are and make sure that you know again you're tracking um, how each individual component is performing um, go over the nodes, switches, LAN um, again uh, just make sure again and again uh, one of the things that you should definitely consider is uh, maybe maybe the maybe the just the just the physical hardware that I have it's not it's not um, it's not what it might be might be part of the problem so you know just consider the you know things like the fiber connection uh, and and you know the storage array like all those things that you know you would think typically are not you know like we're not uh, fitting with with a rack um, but you know we're not we're not disturbing back and back the performance you know of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the performance of um, of your you know for your rack environment like just make sure that you do you do consider I uh, take them into consideration after you um, after everything after um, all the the conventional uh, tests um, you know do not give you any, any sort of uh, do not do not you know give you any warning warnings on uh, you know like on, on things that, that that really stand out such as the node or the other switches. So basically, in terms of rack, uh, <coughs> basically the rack performance is actually based on a uh, on a couple of different different things. So one of them is uh, uh the overflow insulation instance configuration. Basically, that what that means is that you know how you have the nodes configured. Uh, pretty much, um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, your the inst instance configuration, like. It's you know you 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 uh when you when you create when you install the Oracle software you just you know uh you know make sure that you have the right the right initialization parameters uh in your um you know that are that are gonna that are that are um so sort of like that are that are um, part of the that actually bring about the startup for your instance and you know um and that's that's pretty much it just make sure you. Understand what 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 the initial 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 parameters are for your uh, Oracle instance, and then also just um, uh, also review your Oracle cluster configuration. Um, again, um, you know you you're gonna have different instances, um, you know your nodes, uh, and they're all gonna form a cluster. So you wanna make sure that uh, in terms of that um, that you know if there's again definitely you will have cache fusion. But you want to make sure that you know that that ca that cache fusion is actually you know working you know optimally. It's not um, there's no uh, there's no uh, sort of like you know you know weight w like heavy heavy lifting that it's doing uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, resourcing different nodes. So you want to definitely um, uh, listen to your uh, local cluster configuration. And also again, <coughs> as I've just told you. Uh <coughs> Uh, with that, with, uh, with with cash uh, fusion, um, again, it's it's uh, it's basically uh, it's also the uh, uh. having with uh, with uh, with with high speed interconnect, uh, which is a, which is a, which is a private network. Again, what you want to do is you don't want to um, overstress the cash fusion, uh, which is your high speed inter interconnect. You want to um, uh, you want to just uh, allow for the nodes to um, allow for the nodes to just have you know. You know, um, like you know, they, they they're gonna have synchronization. They're gonna they're gonna have um, sharing of uh, of uh, storage networks. But you um you you do not want to you know add additional um you know add, add additional steps for it to uh, you know give you optimal optimal performance. Um, I'm gonna show you an example later on on how to on, on what what uh, on an example of of how you can uh, overwork your uh, the cache fusion again. Cache fusion can be actually be um, be um, that term can be um, um, again used can can be interchanged with uh, high speed interconnect. Uh, another thing that you need to, you need to consider is the application. Um, again, application. When you think of uh, application, that's what's being presented to you. So uh, again, the application, how the application is written, or you know how it's coded, can actually. Uh, affect every other component um, so if it's not you know if, if you're pointing to 
you know, if you if you have unreasonable um, queries uh, that are part of that are part of the application, then basically you find yourself, um, you know, uh, you find you find again you find the database, you find the, the um uh, the so the uh, instance doing you you find it you find you find the database doing a whole lot of you know working to get the queries, and then again when you have when you have that many resources being spent on finding the queries. Uh, that degrades the performance of the application, and then again, that's kind of also um, that's kind of also gonna gonna uh, lessen the the user experience. Um, you know, or, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna it's gonna um, it's gonna it's gonna make that it's gonna um, you know it's not gonna be the user is not it's gonna be less welcoming to you know to, uh, you know having to interact with uh, with the application. And also another thing that you need to consider is the wait time for the for the operation itself. Uh, by that I mean um, What's your CPU? What's your I/O? Um, you know, uh, basically just um, you know, make sure that you understand what uh, how many reads and writes are being are being performed. Um, and you know, uh, once you've once you've done that, uh, you sh you, sh uh, you should you know get a sense of whether or not it's um, it's either of these two things or if it's just uh, I think the connect. And again, um. Uh, in one of my previous videos, I actually, I actually went over um, how the, f the fact that, like, um, in terms of rack, um, these two CPU and I/O were were, um, were very important. So again, you want to be able to uh, just just test uh, these out and see and, and sort of like um, exclude them as part of problem before you can move on. So basically, uh, again, these are just some of the things that you should do. Um, um, some of the components that you, you, you know you, ha you have to like you know, take take into, into uh, consideration as you uh, as you look into um, you know improve the performance of your rack. Uh, so again, so all nodes in in your rack should perform at just about the same level. Uh, so uh, basically, you know, if again, if you if you think of you know think of the number of cores, for example, uh, if you have a uh, a sixteen core or a uh, or a 32 bit core or your or 64 bit core you need to make sure that all the nodes on your in your in your in your in your um in your cluster have have that um have the same number of cores um uh, for optimal performance and again also in terms of uh clusters uh, uh again the concept of a uh, cluster master where basically one one cluster is uh is sort of like the uh the head of the you know of that group again um what you often find is that um, in terms of let's say you have a scenario and ramen, you have a, you have a, a, a one one of them is a cluster master and then you find yourself with you know the two nodes that are not, that are not, that are, that are um, the following the following clusters would actually uh, first go to the cluster master to get to get you know like you know uh, uh, for communi for you know for uh, for communication before you can actually go to the uh, to the um, to the, uh, the the other like like one of the nodes will actually go to the cluster master before you can go to the other node to, you know, for uh you know to continue down you know the, the the communication stuff. It's not gonna be a direct communication from node to node. You you know when you include the cluster master, it's gonna uh you're gonna if 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 for example you have a uh, let's say you have a 64 bit 64 bit on the two nodes and you have on the cluster master you have a 32 bit um 32 bit uh 32 bit uh a core. Uh then basically what's gonna happen is that um the the two nodes that are not cluster master are fine, but the 32 bit, the 32 bit uh, core uh, cluster master node is actually not fine, and that one is actually going to um, uh, degrade per the performance of the entire cluster. So you want to take the uh, you want to take the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, co the core performance for the cluster master into uh, you want you want to you want to factor that into your decision making in terms of uh, in terms of how you how you uh, you configure your node. And also in terms of a uh, high-speed inter interconnect, so you need to consider the private network uh, segments. Um, again, basically, it's just um, you know, uh, like uh, again, going back to what a segment is. Um, you have you have uh, you have blocks, you have exchange, you have segments, you have um, and you have table spaces, uh, which is logical. So with with uh, segments, you know, if you have you know multiple nodes, uh, again they each have their individual they each have, have their individual uh, virtual IDs, uh, and what you might have is you might have a, some sort of contention in between 
uh, those uh, those uh, different components. So you want to just uh, make sure that you you know you are you are uh, still separating uh, separating uh, out you know the um, each node um, you know by networking by segments. And also you should consider a, <coughs> a 10 gigabit Ethernet port when you to connect. Again, that's just for uh, that's just recommended. Uh, that's gonna um, that's gonna um, actually just you know give you the you know very optimal performance. Uh, but it's again it's gonna depend on which one, what type of environment you you have. If you don't if you have a uh, a um, an, an environment that requires less, then again you would probably go with you have to um, be, you know reduce that that the ten to something else. Or if or it's the other it opposite is true for the, uh, if you have if you have more. Um, if you have more nodes, then you probably have to increase the uh, the, the, the gigabit, the ten gigabit value for it for it And also, you should you should uh, also just evaluate um, basically the switches, uh, which are essentially your virtual uh, local area networks, the VLANs. Um, again, you should um, you should set them to jumbo plane. Uh, this is just a recommendation um, by some of the older professionals. And then also you should uh, you should consider your um, your node network interface or uh, you actually know your network interface control for your node. So basically, what it is is a uh, it's a network. It has it basically goes by the name network interface card, network adapter, and then LAN adapter. Basically, what it does is it computes it, com it, it connects computer to computer network, and you should um you should uh, you know just uh. Just see see how see how well that 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 is working, um, you know, inside of your uh, inside of your like environment, and you should also be able to to bond those uh, those network uh, interface interface controllers uh, to increase throughput. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, again, that's gonna that's gonna lead to uh, again one increase throughput basically is it means more reads uh, or more deliveries. Um, so def definitely you have. You have an ex you have a, uh, a better user experience um, uh, if you if you would think it's a true uh, and also you need to consider the, the disk arrays uh, um, you know the setup so uh, again I've, I've um, in terms of uh, oil LRTP and oil oil uh, again they have they have different um, they have different uh, functions so what I mean. So with OLTP, uh, it's online transactional uh, processing. You have more more reads and writes in that in that OLTP system. So basically, that means that you just uh, you are gonna have more more um more servicing of processes. So what you wanna do is you wanna uh, you wanna just uh, set up you wanna um you know configure um, your disk arrays to, to to um you know to to uh to account for the increased number of, of reading writes, uh, you know, if you were, if you were to be working in the OLTP uh, uh, environment or system, and if you were, if you're working in an OLAP uh, environment, which is online analytical processing, which is more of a data, data warehouse where you have less read, uh, where you have less writes and, and basically just more read, uh, we're, bas we're basically um, you, you again you require you probably just require less uh, disk arrays. Um, so uh, yeah, just again you got it's it's all it's the, the terms of disk arrays set up is all gonna be based on the read and write operation. And then also need to evaluate your software. Um, you need to make sure that the each that each node have um, the same belief patch for the Oracle software. And also, you need to make sure that if you have if you have the um, the nodes um, installed on different systems, uh, you need to make sure that those systems are on the same version and the same patch. And also, you need to look at the grid infrastructure software. You need to make sure again, the grid infrastructure. What 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 Oracle has done now is actually it has actually integrated ASM. Which is automatic code ma management into uh, into grid infrastructure. So basically, as you're setting up, as you config, you're attaching your nodes. Basically, the, sto the storage mechanism that you that you are uh, that Oco uh, actually forces you to use is a uh, ASM. So you need to um, basically just have softwares installed on your computer that that are like Word that are only that are only going to recognize like commands and you know and going to give you 
information for the overall rack and um, and basically uh, if you if 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 going back to go going back here to the spec spec or AWR report for example uh, if you if you find yourself just using software that uh, that only recognizes you know the configuration of a node and not the overall the overall, the overall rack environment then basically you'll be making assumptions uh, you be you be working um, you you would not be you know taking steps towards a uh, a uh, solution you be so like you know a I'm wor I'm this node is now is has this problem so maybe this is the same problem that's replicating the other node or if the, if the node is going fine then you know you still you still be you know wondering what's going on again each node is in you know has its individual you know um, it's gonna have its individual responses that's why I told you guys earlier that. You have to make sure that you have a you have a layout of uh, of nodes, the IP, the different components, the switches, the fibers, um, the the, uh, the 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 you know the uh, storage network. So just uh, make sure that you're using um, like your work software only for your uh, you know in terms of uh, managing your your rack environment. And in terms of storage, uh, one of the things you have to do is you have to make sure that you have a um, you have a um, um, multipath um, setup again. I've already covered this in the previous video. So basically, multipath is like you allow for uh, you allow for um, for um, you know like mo uh, for different more for more than just one pathway to uh, for the CPU to the uh, different sto storage devices. Again, um, so if you have if you already have a pathway to the switches. That's fine, but you can work the way you can modify it, where you can actually put it out of this, another path with the buses. So the more you multi path, the better the uh, the better connection will be from a CPU to different storage devices. And uh, also, you need to um, again uh, configure the um, the settings for the read and write um, um, in in in, in, your, in, your sto in your storage environment. And those uh, the read and write have they have to match those in the uh, the, the read and write operations which are uh, in your in the application setup. So again, um, uh, yeah. So it, it so these two performances are, li are linked. Um, um, how um, and basically how, how much read and write that you have in the going on in, in inside the, um, um, for, for the storage. Um, part of your of your configuration is gonna it's gonna um, basically um, it's gonna have it's gonna influence uh, how much uh, the, it's gonna influence it's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna either you know it's gonna have an influence on the performance of your application again and that and that and and, and with the application it also has it also it's also gonna have its its own number of reading write operations so uh, make sure that those um, that those two uh, those that those the two numbers of operations is both at the storage level and at the, at the, at the application level are just about the same. And also, you need to um, you need to use a small, what's known as a uh, small computer system interface, which is SPSI. So this is what I that is, that is is a um, it's just a uh, it's just an interface. It's an ANSI standard interface that um, links um, that links the PC to the hardware, the 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 the, um, the, the drive. Uh, you have multiple drive, you have your hard the hardware disk drive, you have a city one drive. And again, so it links your PC to those drives and again it's kinda it what it does is it allows for that communication to take the, the communication to take place. And again that's referred to as a, as the uh SPSI or, or the small computer system interface. And basically um yeah. Again if you look at the last body it, it must be it must be the same as high speed in the connect setup. So basically, what that's what that's saying is that you know um, that SPSI, the configuration for that SPSI, uh, you know whatever configuration is for, for your for your SPSI for your for your rack environment has to be the same for um, it has to connect uh, or cache fusion setup uh, for your rack um, for your rack environment. So both what you're doing here is you just you're you're going to be matching the um the, the um the, the the setup of the of the physical, of the, of the physical, um, the physical, uh, physical components, you know, PCs, uh, drives, to the uh, the logical components, uh, which is the cache fusion or, or the high speed interconnect. And in terms of this is very important actually. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of how your rack your rack environment is set up, like so, basically. 
what you're doing is so you have individual instances and then ultimately you have a database that they're all that they that's being that's being that's being, um, that's being queried um, and inside of that database you have um, you have uh, basically the smallest um, storage um, this, this you have you have a small the smallest storage uh, uh, object uh, inside of Oracle, which is the which is the Oracle, Oracle database block. So with the database block, um, in how how that affects your um, your back uh, your back environment basically is uh, if you set up if you set up uh, a rack if if you set up um, let's say let's say a Tino rack. No, no, you know what? I'm just, I'm not gonna go that far. I'm just gonna say, okay, if if one of your nodes has a has a block that's about eight, eight k. Again, that's the uh, that's the that's the default value for um uh, all Oracle database blocks. If you if your Oracle block has has about eight k, um, again, what's gonna happen inside of that block is you're gonna have a uh, you're gonna have a number of rows. So the way that the block is the block works is internally it it has it, it's 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 the, the information that's being that's being stored is actually is actually stored in the form of rows. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna uh, just cover that in in, a, in the next few slides. But again, so it's actually recommended to have uh, to have um, a larger number of rows, uh, a, 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 lo a larger block, uh, which is gonna lead to more rows um, being stored inside a block. And again, this is very common for for our DBA to, to um, you know have that as their configuration. Um, but also, um, again, so in if but if but the thing is, so even even though you you have, a, you, you might want to have more rows stored inside of your block. But then again, what would happen is that you would find you, you would actually have a, a problem with the um, with uh, the cache fusion or the hash being connect interconnect. So what's What's gonna happen is that you know there's gonna be so if you have a T node T node setup for example and, and basically you have you have the you know, the rows you have you have rows one to three and, and uh, another one and then rows one to three and node two. Uh, basically what you're doing is you're gonna have the cache fusion sort of like doing a, lo a lot of thinking, you know, going back and forth. Um, so if the if the if the um, a lot of thinking and a lot of working. So if the if the row is really long, then Cashier is gonna spend a lot of time doing the reading of those rows in the in the first block for the first node. And it's gonna be it's gonna have to again turn around and go into and do the same thing for the uh, for the um, you know for 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 the for the for the for the, um, bl the, the, the block for the second node. For you to be able to view to view the uh, to view the data, so um, by doing by having uh, a large block, uh, what you can what you can you can actually even even though it's you know it's it's beneficial in terms of you know being able to store more rows. Uh, what you might also encounter is that um, the problem the problem you might also encounter is that you know you might degrade perform the, the performance of your of your cache fusion, and ultimately you know it's not gonna uh, you know this your, your back environment is gonna you know. It's it's not gonna give a user the best the best ex experience um, um, uh, that it that is um, you know that that they, that they wish to that they, that, 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 that they're looking for and also uh, again just what I've already told you guys so larger block size mean more rows and then when you have more rows uh, that actually leads to um, that actually leads to block contention um, so again if you have multiple nodes. You have lo you have you have lo you have massive blocks. You have more rows in the two in, in the individual nodes, and that what that means is that um, you know there might be confusion for on the part of the, uh, on the part of the cache fusion on what on, on which rows to actually uh, refer to for uh, for row data. And again, that's one that's that's, that's that's that 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 problem is actually is like it's called the, the block contention. And um and again yeah so and and the more the more you scale out your um your rack your rack setup so two node is fine but if you go to three node four node five node um basically you're gonna have the same problem where basically cash fusion is gonna be it's gonna be you know doing a lot of you know run you know like um synchronization synchronizing from the first node to the first node to second node second node to third node 
they're just flow notes and basically that's that's gonna be a, whole, a lot of work for the, for the cast students so you wanna uh, you also wanna you know just kinda look out for um, you know how many notes that you have set up and and um, yeah the, so be on the lookout for how many notes you have set up and the number of um, the number of uh, the, the size of the blocks because you don't wanna have you want you don't want to have too many rows inside of your blocks ultimately. So basically, this is just a database block. So if you look at this is again this is um only conf this is configuration for a single node in a single node um for a single node um environment or a single node installation. So with a typical block, what you have is you just have you know this is this is a row this is what a row this is the the row uh data as I as I already told you guys. So the data loads from the bottom up. And so, if you look at uh, at this one, so this is what I was referring to. You have row one, you have row two, row three, row four, and then you have three six. So these rows are being are being the data is being stored in these rows. So for example, we row row number one. So just look how look how big uh, this row is. Uh, so. Basically, again, this is this is this is a database block. So what I was telling you guys earlier is that, so if you have if you have a large database block, you might have a a a, 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 a large number of rows. So basically, this one is big. You know, you have you just you just stacking you just stacking you know more and more rows for four, and it's just going on and on and on. You know, you might have a file up here. So um, so as you do this. As you are actually, you know, you know, writing like storing more, storing a greater number of rows inside of your block, uh, you know, and it, and again, this is fine for a single node configuration. But if you're going to, if you move into a, um, a rack environment where you have, you're going to have one block here, you're going to have another block here for a different node, and you're going to have cache fusion um, to be able to synchronize those uh, these two these two um, blocks. That's going to be a problem. Um, you, you're going to have contention in the block contention, you know. The the rows might you know might interlock so it's um, definitely um definitely this this is this is an okay s this is this is an okay setup have again this is this is a this is a uh you know useful tip in terms of single nodes um have at it um with your with your DB block um size setup but with rack um, be very mindful of you know uh, of um of how that might actually affect um, you know the um, you know the the, uh, the, the both the cache fusion also the um, you know uh, the contention uh, that's gonna happen you know when you when you actually um, um, have uh, more nodes or, or more more open software that are that are installed as, as part of your of your rack um, rack environment. So basically, this is what I was um, what I was referring to. Um, uh, this is what uh, this is what I, I was just referring to right now. So basically, um, so here you have. You have a database block in SGA two, SGA one, and you have a database block in SGA three. So basically, you have cache fusion here. So this is what I was saying earlier. So cache fusion is doing this. You know, it's it's doing a lot of back and forth. Um, so what's gonna happen is that if you have if you have so think of think of it this way, right? So if this block is eight eight K, right? This one is eight K. Um, you have the different rows. You have row one, row two, but here we have row X, row Y. So you're gonna have again, it's being loaded. It's being loaded from the bottom up. So you're gonna have all these rows being loaded, being being um being placed into the block. All these rows being added. All these rows being added. All these rows being added. And then, so what's gonna happen is that if you have a multi-node environment, right? Um, basically, if you might find yourself, you know, in, in a situation where basically the rows. Are the same, so you have row Y, row Y. This is very confusing with cash fusion, right? Because you again, these are essentially the same, the same row. So what you want to do is, you know, and again, if if, if it's even going to get worse once you continue to scale it out, let's just imagine this SGA three year, uh, where you have the same rows, and then you're going to have cash fusion doing doing even doing even more work. So that's what I was saying. With uh, you know, uh, that's the that's the problem with making. Uh, the block size too large. Uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have an, an increased number of rows, and an increased number of rows means it, it means that you actually you actually make the ch you you actually um you also increase the chances of having a uh, a, 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 a block contention for your um 
you know, quotes for your line, and that's going to lead to, um, you know, errors or, you know, big conditioning performance. And again, another example uh, that, um, that I really want to mention is that, so when you have, um, when, let's say you have a two node, a two node, a two, okay, a, a three node, um, a three node environment. Um, so when you have a three node environment, right? So you, what you have is you have a, you have what's known as a cluster master. So in a, again, nodes are part of a cluster. So you would have, again, this is going to be SGA three. Um, so you have SGA one, SGA two, SGA three. So you have three blocks, right? And you have cash fusion going back and forth. But the thing is, this is a cluster master, right? So if you have SGA one as one of the, as one of the, um, just the regular node, and it's looking for information in uh, in um, in SGA two, but actually the SGA three is a cluster master. What you're gonna have is you might have a situation where the cache is not gonna go to this one right away. It's gonna go into the cluster master for communication first before it goes into the uh, into actual node. Or actually, you know, it would do this, do this, and then come to this one. Why? Because this is a cluster master. So this one is this one is the is actually is the uh, is the is the node that's gonna be that's responsible for like everything that goes on inside of inside of a cluster, the cluster master. And uh, again, the concept the concept the concept of cluster master is something that I've, that uh, I'll, I'll I should give, I should cover uh, in one of my um in one of you know one of my um one of, one of my other videos. But again, um. Inside of a inside of a cluster, you will you will always have a cluster master, and then the cluster master is going to be responsible for different communication between the uh, the other nodes um, that are that the other regular nodes that that are part of the cluster. And yeah, so um, just um, again, this is the reason why you do not have a uh, a large number of uh, of rows, a, 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 a large enough block where the number of rows can actually start to tension or. Uh, or uh, basically um, uh, a lot of work for the cash fusion. So uh, this is just uh, in um, many notes. Um, so OcoVac overall is very robust. It's very stable, and also it's gonna it's gonna achieve um, high level high availability, scalability, and, and elasticity. So you basically you'll be able to add more more instances. You know you'll be have you'll be able to have more uh, more fellow connection. Uh, that's fine. Those are the benefits of having an Alcovac setup, and also with Alcovac, it's very cost cost effective. Um, basically, uh, when you compare it to like com conventional, conventional computer models like mainframe, um, again, this is a, um, you can you can just you can scale it out. You can you can scale out Alcovac, you know, with a number of nodes, um, and 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 yeah, and Alco again, Alco is very um. That's why Alco is actually is actually. Um, you know, have so many clients. You know, ranging from government, uh, government, from, you know, from government, from, from government um, entities to government contractors to like, you know, companies in the private sector. Oracle is very scalable, and, and basically, and techno the technology is, you know, is highly respected. Uh, okay, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys next time.